Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mary Callway, and I'm the mayor of the village of Lindbrook. Our village is about to undertake a new garbage collection and recycling program. Our purpose here today is to begin explaining the changes which will be occurring in the near future. And with me is Larry Bean, labor supervisor at the Department of Public Works. Hi, Larry. Hi. I suppose the first question that I would ask as a resident is why are we trying to fix something that really isn't broken? Well, our system isn't broken, but there have been some changes in recent times which have made it in our village's best interest to mo modernize our collection programs. Well, what are those changes? The first change is the clothing of the Oceanside landfill and dump. In early 1990, the town of Hempstead closed its landfill to the village of Limbrook's garbage pretty much, much completely. At that point, the village was forced to truck all of its garbage to American Refuel. American Refuel is located in Garden City, actually at the east end of Garden City on the Uniondale border. And in Garden City, our, at, at American Refuel, excuse me, our garbage is incinerated. And it is turned into electric energy, which is sold back to Lilco. Well, this extra mileage made uh, through the trip to uh, the American Refuel uh, plant has made the process longer and has created more wear and tear in our garbage trucks. Well, to solve this problem, our village has entered into an agreement with the village of Rockville Center to create a transfer station. What, what this means to us is that we now truck our garbage only to Rockville Center. As a matter of fact, we bring it to a Rockville Center facility right over the village border, the Limbrook village border. At this transfer station, our garbage is located or, or accumulated on a larger tractor trailer, which is, when full, driven over to the American Refuel fuel facility by Rockville Center personnel. In order to better use the freed up manpower created by the shorter garbage transportation distance and to work within Rockville Center's uh, schedule, we have changed our garbage collection schedule from six days to four days per week. Well, the next question is, what are we doing with the extra time? We are using the extra manpower, excuse me, man hours, to expand our recycling program to include plastics recycling. As part of our recycling program, we have purchased a new recycling truck, which I'm sure that many of you have seen around the village. This truck permits us to comply with the town of Hempstead mandated source separations. I think at this point we should start talking about the specifics of our new collection program. Larry, would you please describe the new sanitation and recycling routes and the various pickup days for the different areas of the village? Sure. Okay, with me I have a map of the village. And basically what we've done is we've divided the village in half. And as the mayor pointed out, we'll be going through four-day week pickup on the residential. Uh, residents living south of Merrick Road would be picked up on a Monday and a Thursday schedule, and residents on the north side of Merrick Road would be picked up on a Tuesday and Friday schedule. We've also divided the village up into quadrants for the uh, purpose of recycling. Uh, residents living in the, I guess it would be the southwest quadrant, would, which would be south of Merrick Road and west of Broadway, they'd be picked up on Mondays. Residents in the northeast quadrant, that would be east of Hempstead Avenue and north of Merrick Road, they'd be picked up on Tuesdays. Thursday people would be um, south of Merrick Road and east of Broadway. And on Friday, the residents in the northwest quadrant, which would be north of Merrick Road and west of Hempstead Avenue would be picked up. Larry, when will this new uh, schedule go into effect? We anticipate by the end of October we should have the, uh, the routes all in, in line and ready to go. Uh, presently we're getting the flyers printed up and the residents will all be notified before uh, this goes into effect. And the flyer will have 
all this information that you're giving us because it's an awful lot to remember. Right. This this flyer should be everything you ever want to know about sanitation and recycling. Everything will be covered <laughs> in this this flyer that we're sending out. Okay. Thanks. Uh, how will the commercial properties uh, be affected by the new sanitation and recycling schedule? They will also fall into the same scheduling as the, the res residential areas. If you know the north and south bit, if you're north, you know, and that's the way they'll they'll fall in. So they will also be rescheduled. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Larry, let's move on to the changes in the recycling procedures. Uh, I understand that we're going to be receiving new containers. Are we still going to use the old blue ones? Yes. What we're going to be using the old blue ones for is strictly clear glass. Could you give us what exactly is clear glass? Okay. Um, basically, it's glass that has no color to it. I got a couple of samples here today just to give the residents an idea. It's basically, you know, your, your Snapple bottles, your um, mayonnaise, uh, most of your spaghetti sauces, uh, a lot of your uh, salad dressings, the uh, larger ones here, okay, or your, um, a lot of your fruit juices, apple juice and whatnot come in here. And then you also have... Uh, some, <laughs> some of your liquor bottles are <laughs> also clear glass. Okay. Um, are we going to be asking the residents to separate out the, these clear glass and put them in the blue container? Is that what you had in mind? Yes. Okay. Will, will the, the blue containers go out the same day as the other um, con the new container? Right. The blue container and the, the green container will go out on the same day. Okay. Do, you, do we have to remove the labels from the uh, containers at the present time? At this time, it's, it's not required. Okay. Um, what about now? You mentioned the green container. Can you tell us what uh, what will be going in the green container? Okay, the green container is going to contain um, your colored glasses, your plastics, um, cans, you know, tin cans, aluminum cans, basically anything that you've been putting out in your, in your blue pail, you know, over the, over the last couple of years. But now it's going to include the plastics also. When you talk about colored glass, is is that glass that you can see through, but what, explain to me what exactly that is. Uh, basically, colored glass is anything that's not clear. Um, we well, can you see through it, though? It just has color, isn't it? No, there's, there's some that are borderline. Most of you, like, your imported beers, you know, you have your browns and your green glass. Uh, your, your wine bottles, most of them are, are colored. Uh, some, of, some of your juices, your apple juice, a couple of brands use the, uh, the brown glass. Um, and that's a very, very light color. That that would be considered a color. Right. This here, this is tricky. It's a lot of the, the light wines coming in. It's a very pale green bottle, but this is considered a colored glass, and that would go in your green container. Okay. Um, on these bottles, the, the glass bottles, do, do you suggest, uh, do, can we leave the caps on, or what do you suggest? No, all, all the caps should come off both plastics and glass, and, and rinse them out. That's, that's important. To, Okay. to clean them out. Okay. Um, since you mentioned plastics, we are going into plastics recycling. Uh, what plastics, let me just back up. I'm sorry. One of the, at, at the most recent board meeting, a resident asked about broken window glass. She broke a window. Um, can she put it in? It's clear glass. Can she put it into that container? Right. Uh, no. The only thing they'll accept in here is bottles. They, they don't want, you know, windows from, uh, from your home. They don't want mirrors or any, anything like that, uh, you know, ceramics, and just clear bottles that, that contain the beverage at one time. Okay, okay, that's that's good information. Now I guess we're ready to move on to plastics. Right. Um, what exactly, which, which plastics will be able to be recycled? Presently, we're going to be recycling plastics that uh, are labeled one or two on, on a container. Is that on the paper label? What do you mean by labeled? Um, basically... On all the containers, on the bottom, you will see uh, a label. It has the uh, Recyc the recycling triangle, and it has the number in the middle. Like this bleach container here, it's the number two. And you'll see that in the middle there. Um, and also, you know, your, your milk containers, your uh, bottled water, any plastic that you look at, you look at the bottom, and there'll be a number on there, whether it's one, two, the they have sixes. Now, now this is a, a soda bottle, which I presume you, someone could return to the store for a refund right. of their deposit. Can they also recycle this? Oh, yeah. We, we pick up a lot of recyclables. Um, 
that could be returned to the store, but people just put them in a recycling container for some reason. Uh, one thing on these plastic bottles, for some reason, the number on these are very hard to see, but these are a number one. It, it's very small in there, just in case somebody has a problem with the rice site. <coughs> okay, um, what types of plastics are not recyclable? Okay, you're also gonna run across a couple of plastics for instance, like the sour cream container, if you look on the bottom, that's the number six. That's not acceptable. Also on this margarine container, that's the number two, but the recycling center does not accept any containers where their definition is if the opening is the same size as the body of the container. What they want is any container that has a neck on it, such as the soda bottle. Um, Basically what it is is there's different resins used in these wide mouth containers and it's affected by the, uh, the flow when they're melting them down and that's why they, they don't want to use anything like this. We also... Uh, how, how do people get rid of uh, these wide necked uh, containers? What do they do with them? Okay, uh, those would just go into regular sanitation. Okay. Also, there's a lot of these cups are popular from the, the fast foods. They also have a number two. I just happened to go home for lunch today and my daughter was showing me, she turned it upside down to show me, unfortunately it was still full, but uh, <laughs> those also would go in the garbage if you, you know, if you're not collecting them. So Larry, what you're saying basically is it's anything with a one or two on it that has a narrow opening at the top, is right. that correct? It's what they consider is a neck on the, the container. Uh, are you going to be, uh, distrib are we planning to distribute these to the residents? Right, these should be out by the end of the month also. That's the, the these are the new green these recycling the, uh, bins. the new ones that are coming out. It's, um, as you can tell, it's a rectangular type container that most municipalities are currently using. It's 18 gallons and uh, empty, it weighs just about five pounds. Uh, the reason why we went to the larger type container over here was that we figured with the plastics, plastics take up a lot of room. And to go to a smaller container, it's it's just not feasible. So that's why we went to the larger one. Okay, Larry, thank you very much. At this time, we'll take a few minutes break. Thank you. Sure. Welcome back. Larry, will the village be continuing to recycle newspapers? Yes, we'll be picking up uh, newspapers the way we have been over the last few years, you know, taking a whole newspaper. Okay, um, what will be your scheduling on that? Newspapers for the entire village will be picked up on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. Okay, uh, what about bulk pickup? And what are the procedures for that? Okay, bulk pickup we're also changing. Um, basically what we're doing is we're going to a four day pickup on that. Excuse me, Larry, what do we have now? Uh, presently, we pick up on Wednesday, but uh, with the amount of stops we're getting, we're getting right now anywhere from three to 400 stops a week and we're, we're hoping we finish on Friday. So what we're going to do now is we're going to a four-day pickup. We're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Monday and Tuesday are going to be burnable days. And we're going to try and put a limit that's manageable that when we tell the residents we can pick up on Monday that their stop will be picked up on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be the same thing for Thursday and Friday with the, the metal stops that uh, when you call up, we will give you a date. And when we tell you that date, it should be picked up on that day. That's great. What exactly do you mean by burnables? Uh, burnables are anything that's um, bedding, furniture, uh, carpeting, tires, uh, any, anything that's not metal. Okay, and um, what would say appliances? Is that what you mean by metals? Right, um, appliances, uh, radiators, tires, uh, I'm sorry, rims, uh, car parts, they would all fall into that metal category. Uh, is there any requirement for the residents? Do you have the phone number handy for the bulk pickup call? Right. Uh, you could call the office between 8 and 4, and uh, the phone number is 599-8838. And uh, like I said before, when you call up, we'll give you a date to, uh, to put it out. That's Monday through Friday? Friday the phone's right. Uh, open? Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Larry, sometimes we, we have, I know that the Environmental Concerns Committee recently did a program in Harold Berger, um, formerly with the DEC in, in uh, New York State, came down and talked to us about getting rid of hazardous waste, uh, pesticides, uh, the oil-based uh, paints that we s 
probably used more in the past, but still sometimes they are used. He even mentioned things like nail polish as being a material that you might not want to put in the normal stream of garbage. Right. How, do, uh, how do you suggest the residents get rid of those types of materials? All right, those types of things, um, the county has a, what they call a stop program. It's um, Stop Throwing Out Pollutants. And they're located over on Caniac Road in Hicksville. And they have a phone number, which uh, I'll give it to you now, is 997-8962. And you would call them, and they have, usually it's on a sad day where, the, where they're open, and you would bring your toxic uh, materials over there, and they would dispose of them. Do they accept batteries? They accept batteries, um, like you said, oil paints, uh, pool chemicals, aerosols, stuff like that. The only thing that I, I know they don't take over there is propane tanks, which um, seem to be a problem in the village where we cannot accept them. And uh, basically what you have to do with those is contact the place, um, just an example, like Island Park Propane. They, they would accept, use propane tanks over there. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're getting on to leaf season. It's mid-October, and uh, that brings up the question of yard waste. Uh, do you have a, a new schedule for the pickup of yard waste? Right. Yard waste is um, also falling into this new sanitation um, scheduling. That's going to be on every Wednesday. And um, when we say yard waste, it's not just confined to leaves. It's also your, uh, your grass clippings, your uh, prunings, any small branches that you have that are tied up that's all considered yard waste, and that would be uh, picked up on Wednesdays. Um, but back to leaves, are you talking about, um, are, are you planning on street pickups every Wednesday, or are you talking about bag leaves? No, this is just going to be the bag leaves every Wednesday. Um, street pickups won't begin, we're hoping to begin sometime, probably the first week in November, but uh, you have to look for the postings on a poll who are going to be around. Okay, so we will be picking up bag leaves every Wednesday right. as soon as this new program goes into effect. Is right. that that's, that's correct. True. Yeah. So that the residents, if, if they have, they, even if the signs aren't up, they can do their um, leaf raking on the weekends, bag the material, and put it out curbside the following Wednesday. Right. That, that's correct. Um, do you have any preference? I mean, we, we offer the, the residents the option of either bagging or um, raking out onto the street. Do you have any preference? Basically, we don't want to force the people to bag them because there, there are a lot of senior citizens in the village and uh, it's hard for them to, to bag them and drag them out to the curb so that's why we, we still offer the uh, the street pickups but it it would help us if, if you bag them any safety concerns as uh, well that's another problem is raking them out in the street a lot of people they just they get the urge and they rake them out regardless of whether their area is posted or not and if large piles in front of the house and then a, a car pulls up with a hot catalytic converter and then the next thing you know the cars in flames, which seems to happen every year in a village. There's at least one or two cars that are destroyed by uh, parking on top of the leaves. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about why we want to recycle. Um, it's my understanding that we pay, I believe you told me earlier, $85 a ton to get rid of our um, garbage. Is that correct? That's correct. And what about, what does it cost us to get rid of um, the yard waste, the, the bag leaves and the uh, grass clippings, etc. Right, that we dispose of over at the uh, the old Oceanside landfill, which is just basically a transfer station now. But over there, it's forty-two dollars a ton okay. to dispose of that stuff. And what about the the, the glass and the, and the plastics and and the, res the newspapers and that the metals? What does that uh, cost us to get rid of? That that is no charge to, to dispose of. Okay, so for each ton of materials that we pull out of the recycling stream, uh, out of excuse me, we pull out of the garbage stream and put them into the recycling stream, we're saving the village, the residents, eighty-five dollars per ton. That's right. Okay, I I wanted to, to the residents. I just wanted to bring you up to date on some information that I've read recently, and that has to do that with the amount of garbage that the average person generates in this country. Uh, the average resident generates four pounds of garbage per day per person. That's a lot of garbage. If you multiply that out and then um, times, if you multiply it out 365 days a year and then multiply the average household by 3.2 persons, you basically come up with that the average household generates about two and a quarter tons of garbage per year. And what this means is that that garbage costs the village over about $200 that we pay that's directly to the town of Hempstead it doesn't count the salaries of the people who work for DPW. It doesn't cost, it doesn't 
take into account the cost of our equipment that's just money that the village collects and sends down to the town of hempstead for the cost of getting for them taking our garbage so it is truly important we can cut down on that figure if we pull out those materials that are able to be recycled oh, yeah. and keep them separate use the bins to do your newspapers and take care of your leaves and your grass clippings etc don't put them in with the regular garbage bag them and put them out separately on wednesday uh, at this time i want to thank you larry great job i had a lot uh, of fun thanks and thank you very much good night